This is Echo 3, and let's make an Ingenuity style helicopter. We will be able to make a close approximation to the craft's appearance, but the actual helicopter's mass is only 2 kilograms. Our version will end up being considerably heavier than that. The Probodobodyne QBE gives us a nice cubic shape similar to Ingenuity, so we can start by placing it as the foundation for our craft. Normally, I like to speed up my build footage, but this time I have not. Hopefully, this will help demonstrate the craft's construction process clearly for anyone interested in replicating the craft. We will be making use of the breaking ground robotic parts. My personal preference is to use the Cow 1000 to help control the propeller blades. Ingenuity is a coaxial style helicopter, and I have a variety of aircraft tutorials, including one on making coaxial helicopters that may interest you. Our craft, like its real world counterpart, is electrically powered. We will need a battery because the probe core itself has an electrical capacity of only 5. We should also place a small reaction wheel as our probe core does not have any. This will give the craft yaw control and will just keep the craft a little bit more stable in flight. Beyond that, it will also be a useful attachment point for some of our other parts. Let's add some landing struts. The grip pads are great for this because they help keep the craft from sliding around on the surface and they have a high impact tolerance. I'll place them on the reaction wheel then rotate and offset them to the useful location down here at the bottom. I typically will use the shortcut keys 2 and 3 on my keyboard to switch between the tools. It looks odd to have the pads floating out there, so we can add some struts to complete the appearance of our landing lanes. Ingenuity is solar powered, so our craft will be too. We can place a pair of small solar panels on the craft and use the offset tool to make sure they will be clear of the rotors and I'm going to be making use of the offset tool quite a bit as we build the craft. And in this case, I just want to offset the panels as soon as I place them so they'll be out of the way and we can work on the rotor parts. We will then offset them back where we want them, but I'm just going to place them and get them out of the way. And uh, that's pretty good. Now for the rotors. We will need to place two rotors in order to make a coaxial design. I have seen others trying to make something similar to Ingenuity with only one rotor, but a coaxial design will give us more stability. Upon testing, I found that I could reduce the motor size to just two and still maintain full revolutions per minute on the motor. By reducing the motor size, we can reduce weight and power consumption. So when you use rotors for your crafts, try to use the smallest motor size that you can Speaking of RPMs, our craft will have a top end of 460 revolutions per minute, but Ingenuity is designed to run at 2400. We can copy the first motor and either attach it directly to the probe core, or you can, like me, attach it to the bottom of the first rotor. Don't try attaching anything to the tops of the rotor parts that's not supposed to move. For the sake of appearance, I will be clipping the motors inside of each other and the probe core. For the first iteration of this craft, I'll be using the propeller blade Type A and testing it on Kerbin and Duna. Spoiler alert, we will be coming back to the hangar to make changes. So stick around and see what's different when we finish this craft. Our motor and a set of props will be set for counterclockwise rotation and the other motor will be set to counterclockwise rotation. Make sure the blades are set appropriately for each motor. The blades will give them pitch and roll control. You can give them yaw control, although the game will not actually assign them the correct uh, collective and cyclic to give them yaw control in, in this particular case. We can set up the action groups. If you have seen my other propeller tutorials, this will be similar. If you have not seen them, you should check them out after you finish this video. The motor power will be bound to the RCS action group. The Cal 1000 then will be bound to the main throttle action group and the propeller deployment angle will be controlled by the Cal 1000. Setting up our action groups like this will end up making the craft a lot easier to manage in flight. I like to make sure that I can easily click on the parts when I'm setting up the action groups so that's why the stuff is offset like it is. It's just helpful for the building process. Eventually we will clip everything together and have a nice finished product. But when you're setting up action groups, it's very good if you can click on things and not have parts overlap while you're working on it. 
the last set of things we'll need to do here before we launch is we will need to check on our center of mass to make sure that the propeller blades are in line with the center of mass. The motors and the thrust generated by the propellers needs to be in line with the center of mass. You can have a slightly off-center thrust, but in general for all your crafts, keep the center of mass in line with the center of thrust and you're going to just have fewer issues with stability, which is what I'm going to be doing here. I'm also going to add a antenna, kind of like ingenuity. The antenna is up here on top of the propeller blades just underneath the uh, solar panels. I couldn't find a, an exact replica antenna. We have very few to choose from and this is the one designed for aircraft. So I'm putting it in a similar place to Ingenuity's. We won't actually really need it for our craft, but I'm trying to maintain a, a similar appearance and functionality. And here I'm messing with the rotors, just making sure the center of mass and the center of thrust is going to be lined up. Once we have that set up, the last thing we will need to do before we launch this craft is we'll need to make sure that our Cal 1000 is set up to properly control the blades. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to set up the Cal 1000 so that our propeller angle blades will go from minus one at zero throttle to 15 degrees at full throttle. Now what this will mean is that the throttle won't directly control the craft's speed, it'll kind of indirectly control it as we change the pitch of the propeller blades. And the nice thing about having a negative number or a negative amount there for the zero throttle is that the craft will actually want to go down as opposed to kind of softly come down when I put it at zero throttle. It just makes controlling the craft a little easier. Our first test will be on Kerbin in one G of gravity and one atmosphere of pressure. It looks like this design performs well here. To test ingenuity in real life, it was placed in a vacuum chamber and the air protect and the air pressure was reduced to less than 1% of that of uh, Earth's. And in order to simulate Mars gravity, they had a string pulling upward. So it would simulate the effects of just 38% of Earth's gravity. So that was kind of cool. Now that we've tested on Kerbin, we need to test on Duna. We don't have a fancy testing chamber, so I just took it to Duna to test it. We'll start the blades up and see what happens. Once we reach full RPMs, I'll increase the angle of the blades and see if we get any lift. And it looks like we don't have the right propeller blades. So we're going to have to make some changes on this. Fortunately, we can. We'll just go back to the hangar here. Nice to be able to revert the flight. What we're going to do with this is we're going to change to the R12 duct fan blades. Now these blades weigh three and a half times more than the propeller blade type A, but it also has three and a third times the lifting surface area. The added weight I found didn't affect the rotor's performance, so we're still able to get full revolutions per minute, but we're gonna have more lifting area on the blades. Now we're gonna be able to take this back to Duna and see how these different blades affect the flight and do they actually work as opposed to the propeller blade type A. We'll start the motors, get it at full RPMs and increase the angle of the blade just a little bit and it looks like we have a functional design. If you like this video, please activate the like button and remember to subscribe to this channel. This is Echo3 and thanks for joining me to discuss making an ingenuity in KSB. I will see you next time.